the upper left. He is. The million dollar man. He is. Gmail Green Wings SOS. Kim Yujin. Millions, millions of dollars. Almost. Almost. Some percentage of that. It's like one fifth of the way there, but. Yeah. He's made a lot of money. To a million. Dollars. And the upper right, the best Zerg around. He is. SK Telecom T1 Soki. I was wondering, like, uh, what's up? Could you get, you can get a tattoo on your eye, right? You mean on your eye, eyelid? On your eyeball. No. What? Can you? I don't know. I, I think, think that's called just taking a pen and gouging your eye out, Artosis, but. Well, I, I just think it would be cool if, like, SOS, like, got a little, a tattooed circle on his eye so that when he stares directly at a cannon, he can see everything it can hit on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> so, so as it's warping, he's like, yes, this is perfect. And he just like focuses in on that as a center point and sees a little circle around yeah. it. I can defend but, this. But has to keep his head exactly two and a half feet away from the monitor yes, or exactly. he loses. Exactly. He loses and has severely damaged eyesight. It's a pretty bad, bad <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anything to win, Tasteless. Whatever it takes, right? Victory is the only thing that matters. Yep. <clears throat> well, we have uh, SOS not going for a Forge first opener. No, in fact, he's uh, doing quite, quite the opposite quite here. Quite not that. In fact, uh, as opposite as you can get, Nexus first into Gateway in the main base. Now, Sulky is making six lings, so mm -hmm. we'll see if he can get any damage done. Right, he, uh, SOS, excuse me, no, Sulky uh, just went down to the bottom center. Um, and sees there's no Protoss there, so the Lings are going to go right over here to the upper left. Mm. Uh, and Sulky, like, this is really interesting because I think SOS did this knowing that Sulky was not going to lose to another cannon rush. Like, SOS has been cannon rushing so heavily. Sulky's like, okay, you're on a new team and you still haven't changed. I'm going to go pool first. <laughs> and it uh, doesn't really pay off for him here. Um, <clears throat> Pylon is tucked pretty neatly back there. Um, behind the gateway and the core. The Lings are going to come up here and see if they can't get any probes. There's a small window of time in which Lings can be somewhat effective depending on where, where the Zealot is and how they both control. Mm -hmm. uh, and that Zealot just now comes out. But still, this is going to be a little bit of a threat here to the probes mining gas. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to see how well he micros. Very well done. This is generally how this looks exactly. Like, the Zealot runs back and forth and tries to mirror the Lings exactly. You notice right after the Lings change direction, the Zealot does as well. Yeah, that and tiny usually this up. is like a perfect dance that yeah. uh, neither player messes up at all. Yeah, and uh, you see he got two probes because he didn't mirror perfectly. If you mirror like exactly perfectly, generally no real damage gets done except a little bit of lost mining time, but two probes, it's a pretty reasonable kill there. Yeah, I'd have to be happy if Sulky get two kills there. Tasteless. Um, yeah, what's up? What do you call a long pylon? A long pylon? Yes. I'm not sure. A pylon. Oh my god. Wow. Wow, we need like a bad jokes book. This is like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should do. We should buy a bunch of bad joke books. We had one before. We remember? had one we used to use for the breaks. Yeah. It was, uh, it was fun times. <laughs> we had some fun with that, actually. We certainly did. It had a lot of good bad jokes in it. Yeah. The only place you can buy a book like that is at a drugstore in America. <laughs> That's where we got it. I forgot I know, about that. Yeah. We found that book. We're like, all right, let's get this. We're going to use this for the show. Um, we just have Warp Gate coming. We didn't have any Stargate made, right? Is that the not yet? No. Just making some gateways at the moment. Okay. Sarg is still on two hatches uh, and teching up a little bit here. Now we still don't quite know what uh, SOS's plan is here. Just making some additional <clears throat> sentries. And... Um, Zerg has banked up enough. Ah. Looks like the drone's just now going out. He wants to try to take a third I, base here. Yeah, I think... I th I do think that uh, SOS might be taking a third base with this build, because like he's just sitting on three gates making some units. Like, this could turn into something like well, a seven gate or something? Yeah, I'm still waiting to see if he's going to add additional gates, because right now, he's also adding more gases here, too, and a forge. Yeah, this is definitely going to be an expand. Okay. So this is actually a very mild build. Yeah, what he's doing is he's giving a nod towards how hard the third base is to take on this map. Mm -hmm. So he's like, he's like, all right, here's three gateways. I'm going to make a bunch of units, and then I'm going to go take it so that it doesn't get canceled. <coughs> Excuse me. At least I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing. 
And it looks like he wants to, he's probably not going to commit with this. He just no. wants to poke out here with the Phoenix and then run back. Yeah. I mean, Zerg, Zerg also gave a nod to how hard the space is to take by taking his own hatch. We got 16 Lings and 11 Roaches with Ling Speed about That's to finish here. This third base for uh, SOS might not be um, <clears throat> capturable. Yeah, I I don't think he can take it right now. To the be the problem is that um you know it's three gates and it, that's a good number of sentries, but not mm. not enough to be um, you know 100% safe. Also, he got some stalkers with that, and you know what? Those stalkers are not sentries. You know what? Um, Th this is this is fine though for SOS, I would say, because think so? he has he's like basically been so safe and careful about everything. He like walked out to put on some oh very light pressure. Oh my god. Oh. Peace. Okay. As long as he doesn't lose sentries there, he's fine. Yep. Um, but he walked out to put on some slight pressure while scouting with this very super safe build with no real committal anywhere. Uh, and this has forced Sulky into a bunch of units. And neither is SOS attacking, nor has he expanded yet. So these units are completely worthless. And he made all these at 38 drones. So his economy is not nearly as strong as it could be right now. And that allows SOS to continue his tech tree a bit more and be completely safe, not risking anything by doing something dumb like an attack or a nexus. Well, let's see where he takes this from here. Um, I like, you know, you, this is a game where both players really were showing a lot of respect to each other in what the other player's build is. Nobody's really pulled uh, any fancy tricks so far, which I'm a bit surprised about here from SOS. I really thought he was going to do something a little bit more uh, extraordinary. Well, uh, you know, it's it's kind of extraordinary in the fact that no one plays like this That's really true. that That's much. True. It, it feels like he's being completely reactive. Like, but the thing is, this may have already all been pre-planned. Like, he may not have been yeah, going into know, like it, an expansion off three base. Too. He might have said, by doing these things in this order, I'm going to force a bunch of units out, which is going to slow his economy, and then I can go into Blink and Claws and all that. So. Very interesting. The thing is, he still might take a third. It really obviously looks like he's gearing up for an attack because he's getting Thermal Ants and Claws and all that, but when your opponent is so committing to all these layer tech units, so you committed. can take a third. Yeah. You, you certainly can, yeah. I mean, that's that's the whole point, right? Protoss wants you to take that, like, for instance, like, much quicker, right? Mm -hmm. But then the Protoss would punish you. And then the Overseer is going to see the additional gateways. He also did see the Warp yeah. Prism coming out here, but you know, Zerg doesn't have a big air op uh, answer to the Warp Prism, um, unless he, the Warp Prism just flies in here and kills itself, which he did right there. I thought he was going to keep that back a little bit further mm -hmm. and wait for some pressure to come out, but that did not happen, so there you go. Well, right now, uh, we had SOS clean up his third base area. Uh, whether that's to take a third, I believe it is. Well, he's adding two more gates, too, so this is like really hard to say what he's doing, but he's at least giving Sulky a bunch of like misinformation. Sulky doesn't know if he's taking a third base or not. We've seen a lot of Protosses make a lot of gates occasionally before expanding. Yeah. Simply because they can't expand, but they need to support this army. Yeah, uh, and, and it's been more popular, especially on the pump, pump last like six months. Just power up with gates. If you're not 100% sure you can take the base, just mm. don't. Get a big scary army and take the base when you're 100% sure you can. And but still have the gateways there to support that. Don't be the guy running out there and canceling a whole bunch. Although, speaking of canceling, this is going to be a definite cancel. Yeah, unfortunately, he was like a couple steps too far up. But uh, the thing is, he's taking this at such a time that his army will hold these layer tech units, which is forcing Sulky, who's still only on the three base economy, to go up to Hive, to grab his Spire. He's got all this layer tech stuff that isn't doing anything for him. Uh, although he has a good drone count, it came late to have all these units out. It's a very interesting game. A lot of intelligence coming out of both sides here. Yeah. These guys are reeking of intelligence, Tasteless. They are. They are just oozing with intelligence. I, I wouldn't call this an ooze. Sorry. It's I okay. really messed up back there. Yeah. I really dropped the ball back there in the cast. Yeah, that's, I, said I mean, that's a little bit really graphic for the situation. Yeah. <laughs> there are children <laughs> watching. <clears throat> um, well, you know, I got to get the upper hand here to SOS. Of, or excuse me, Soul Keem. Um, <clears throat> Sulky is in very good control. Um, nothing's going to be as hard to cast as SOS mm. versus Sue, but SOS and Sulky throws me off a little bit here, too. Indeed. Since I'm in that difficulty of casting the two guys with almost the same letters and names. Um, he can deny the third here, as you see. Zerg's maxed out. And Zerg has a lot of money banked up, by the way, guys. He can remake a good amount of his army. Uh, SOS has to push forward here. Nope, he has to blink back, in fact. Recall oh back. All right, so he you saves that Nexus. Very nicely done. I was so sure he was going to lose that. SOS, yeah, nicely done. 
And the thing is, he killed that fourth and got back. So now he's playing against someone that is on three bases at Hive Tech with a layer-based army, not the greatest upgrades. He is getting some Vipers, but the, the uh, Temple Archives just finished up. So if we see a couple High Templars warped in, he hits his feedbacks. His army is just superior to Sulky's. He's got better upgrades. He's got more tech. Everything is actually looking fantastic for SOS as long as these Vipers don't do what they intend to do. Okay, the Roaches and Hiders are coming up now. Triggering the Nexus Cannon. You can see Sulky's trying to get him out of, out of position here. This is actually very tough for both parties. Uh, Sulky double expanding while applying the pressure. Sulky playing perfectly. I mean, really, he's doing everything he needs I'm, to be doing right now. To both sides are... Th this is such a to and fro right now. You know, this is like, they are both just countering, 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 uh, doing their absolute best in every situation. Like, Sulky has kind of been uh, more on the offensive, like forcing the counters, but then he's countering the counter, to which the counter gets countered. It's, like, really super high level. It's quite beautiful, actually. It is. It's a gorgeous thing. All right, here we go. Is he going to get those feedbacks off? Oh, and he nails them. Really well done there. Yeah, and now uh, SOS fighting back. Again, the counter. It looks like he's going to try to commit and just take out this Nexus, and that's going to work. Nicely yeah. done. That's all uh, Sulky needed to do. I mean, I know he lost the Vipers and everything. Everything's totally fine now for Sulky. He's got his opponent in the spot he wants him. Keep in mind, this is the map merry-go-round, um, so he can actually always counterattack, basically. You could basically always counter mm -hmm. on this map, mm -hmm. which is why a Zerg like that. Also, the way the map's structured, the Zerg can keep expanding uh, downward in this case. Protoss will run out of expansions. It's pretty tough for Protoss to actually get mm. to the bottom center location. Yeah. Much easier for the Zerg. Like, he'll probably take that high ground as his uh, fourth base if we get to that part of the game. Uh, but, you know, right now, even though Sulky did do a good job of sniping that, a bunch of units did end up dying off, I guess. You know, his, his fourth base is up, but it's only mining gas at the moment. Like, we still have a good army here for, for SOS. He might be able to get something to, to work out for him because... You know, this is a pretty underwhelming army from Sulky. Nothing too, too scary there. Oh, oh, this is a nice hit, though. That's a lot of capital loss right now for Sulky. Mm. Um, and even clicking on top of that. Uh, now, that army can try to counter, but um, really the route is pretty interrupted. We see a second counter coming up here now from Sulky. He wants to keep Protoss busy here, but you got to keep in mind, Protoss can still make a lot. Um, well, nope. Now, SOS, I guess this is really the burden of the map mm. that we're starting to see kind of uh, come to life now. Where yeah. Zerg just keeps uh, the Protoss stuck at home. Well, it looks like he wants to pick off this third base. Uh, not really micro it quite as much as I thought he might there. It will end up killing it off, but going to lose a ton of units in the meantime, like a ton. Oh, nice, nice uh, grab. Down. Yeah, well, they're both played quite nicely. But Sulky uh, losing a ton of units okay. there. So I know SOS has played really well, but let's be real here. This is five bases to two. Mm -hmm. um, well, this has to go base lot. trade. It, yeah. Like for well, SOS to win this, he needs to go attack like right now and send Zealots towards the bottom bases. Yeah. But he needs to go right for the heart with his because we see a Mutalus tech switch here. Yeah. If he doesn't he do it now, he's just dead. I mean, that's when it's it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I right. those artosis that said, you know, mutt butts in great number are quite good. Um, that's actually a direct quote from me. Thank yeah, you for. Uh, yeah, it's in the book of Tosis. Pointing that out. Three fifteen is. Uh, artosis three fifteen. Artosis three fifteen, man. Um, now, the mutas Ooh, or, or mutt butts, as artosis likes to call them, are now coming in here and. Again, SOS going back and defending. I mean, the Zealots are doing a lot of damage. Hold on, I gotta like lean yeah, way like, forward in my chair. How many places are being hit now? It's like four. He is hitting a lot of locations. Like, I guess if he can save his base while killing bases off, that's good. But isn't isn't Sulky gonna hold this eventually? Right? He should. Although uh, his supply is dropping considerably, Artosis, 134. Mm -hmm. I think all the mutas just died. Oh. Nope. Excuse me. They totally did not just die. That was just the ones down there. Um. This is actually, actually, you know what, Artos? I think SOS wins this. Look at the, look at the supply. Look at the only for fifteen Zerg. drones left at the moment. You're right. How did I this guess? actually happen so fast? Uh, you know what, yeah, guys? Stargate observing is very difficult to do, and it's actually quite difficult to capture here. All the drones that were killed off. Um, well, that's a lot of broodlords being made, Paceless, and he doesn't yeah. add a lot of anti-air. That's true too. 
Wow, that's but he a good also size only has farm. 13 drones. Keep in mind, there's still a lot of... Damn. But where is the rest of the anti-air here? Uh, it's coming down here from the bottom. Don't know how many of it is exactly. One more storm. Actually, a couple of those storms missing. Um, well, keep in mind that Protoss has the bottom left. His cybernetics core is at the natural. So, I mean, he could make a lot more stalkers. I mean, I mean, four Snockers is nothing to, you know, sneeze at, but it's also, I mean, four Broodlers is nothing to sneeze at, but it's still a considerable army. Wow, these guys both taking huge blows. I yeah, mean, this huge. was a lot of damage done, but... <clears throat> I love the Dark Shrine, by the way. Oh, I mm. love that so much. Well, when you're this low in economy, you can't really afford anything at all. And for Detection right now, he has nothing. Like, he might have a couple spores on that, but no Overseers out. Yeah, and so... If he gets a few DTs over there, that's such a, a lot, a, a huge expense there for him to try to stop that. Just two or two or three DTs even. Would Look cut at it. these mutas though. <laughs> these mutas are gaining a lot of advantage for him, killing off quite a few probes. He's down to just 30 probes at the moment against those 24 drones. Well, he's already gonna have the overseers out here. Yeah, he, his mutas did end up seeing that uh, dark shrine. And still, you know, Soki has a lot of hatches. He can he can rebuild rather quickly if he gets some money going. And uh, I have to say, I really am kind of pleased at the way this game ended up. I'm really impressed that SOS Ooh. actually did this much damage. Oh my god! And got it. Wow. All right. Just in the nick of time. Ouch. Gets the mothership core. Protoss with a little bit of a better income here. Okay, here comes. This is actually the wrong. Well, no, no, it's not actually. If he actually gets that. Yeah. And it's that's... in another DT over here. I was going to say there's no drones up here. Then I saw the. the health of the hive and I'm like oh actually this is a great idea. I think it's those seven mutas. It's well, hard to with just nine it. stalkers to stop it. that. It's... Wow. Oh man. Well, the the we do have a DT going down here now as well. He's Sulky kind of falling apart at the moment. He doesn't have enough units to really spread them out well, especially he, considering a huge amount of his supply is his mutas. For the, he was prepared for the idea that DT is just not the um, <clears throat> implementation of the DTs from mm. SOS. I mean he had actually three overseers making that we saw earlier but well, um, yeah, you, he pulled his army around, though, because the army itself is so small. Uh, Sulky had to focus on building drones and just didn't have a whole lot aside from those mutas that are harassing. So the DTs being kind of spread out uh, really kind of threw Sulky for a loop. You know, he went towards that one hatch. The army went up to deal with that. And then it's like, oh, crap, now he's in my main. I better go up there. And then he hit that bottom base. 32, so 32 versus 32 workers right now. And the supply is virtually even, so that really goes to show you how neck and neck it is right now. Mm. These um, two are a good match for to, each other, for sure. Yeah, no kidding. You do have to really add in um, just how uh, badly they've both been hit. I mean, really, SOS is having a hard time defending everything. Uh, he's just spread so thin. Meanwhile, Sulky has had massive blows to his tech, as well as the hatches that were uh, sprinkled about the map. So this is a tough one. SOS is pushing out. It looked like there was the, the, the relics of a Brood War tech here, a Brood Lord tech, excuse me, mm. uh, coming up here. Uh, but he never got enough Brood, brood uh, Lords for it to be uh, effective. And now we have a small attack here from SOS. But I say, I'm, I'm really liking the army right now of uh, SOS more than yeah. Sulkies. Sulkies is like, you know, Roaches this late into the game against someone who has Blink, good upgrades, Immortals, Psy Storm. I don't think that the Roaches are going to do that well. And other than that, he doesn't have a whole lot going on. Yeah, he's doing his best with this Muta Harass, but the worker supply is not too far off from each other. Well, now he's got a 10 worker lead. You know, there still are uh, those really fresh bases for, for SOS as well, but... I mean, uh, for Sulky as well. But SOS moving across the map at the moment. And yeah, I, I just feel like his... It's its hard to imagine this army actually winning the battle. It's going to have to micro it really, really well. Those Broodlings are going to have to do a lot of work. But uh, a couple good size storms and everything's going to get shredded. You know, I think if, it, if uh, Sulky had less places to defend, he would probably survive a little bit longer. But really, SOS is just going to go where the engagement favors him. I feel like that, yeah. Like he's he can easily go up, uh, snipe this natural. He needs a mothership core of this. What he really needs is an observer. Yeah, those. The are fact good that too. Sulky can watch this army the entire time due to creep tumors is obviously not a good thing for SOS. It's allowing Sulky to just outmaneuver him. SOS really proceeding with utmost caution right now. What? <laughs> Nothing <laughs> dies. 
That's how even these guys are. Okay, so nicely done there. Takes out the hatch. So keep in mind, uh, Zerg really doesn't want to lose these hatches because even though even though there's just a little bit of minerals in them, it's pretty important in a phase mm. of the game like this. I mean, this is really... Oh, my God. Swarm hosts are popping out, Tasteless. Yeah, man. I'm suddenly giving this uh, possibly back over to Sulky. There's, Where is the observer? Though? There's no it observers. Uh, so without any observers and think, all these free oh, units popping starting out. starting Chrono, please. Well, I'm sure he certainly will. A lot of this tech being taken down by very few units. SOS has kind of zoned out that area of the map, but you know with what, Locus though? incoming now, I don't know if he's going to be able to break through. Well, he doesn't have a... I don't think he has... How many Locus does he have? Uh, Is it right, five? No, he's going to have like seven. Six, okay. And or maybe even eight. Eight, eight soon. It's three more are going to hatch. Um... Wow. Well, this is... It felt like Sulky Definitely may have had a weird. army in there where he could have gone in and killed off the army, but uh, it feels like he doesn't quite see it the same way there. I think he just actually had a brain fart and didn't get an observer. I mean, of course you should have an observer there. Mm. He's, yeah, he definitely could have afforded it as well. It, especially when he's walking around the creep the whole time. I feel like he could have maybe forced uh, Sulky's hand a little bit better if he had killed off a lot of creep tumors. But anyways, here we go, Tasteless. With some Psy Storms, maybe he can still break through here. Psy Storming those roaches down. Oh, beautiful Psy Storms on top of the Hydras as well. Oh, nicely done here. Blinking forward. Nice Psy Storms oh, again. Oh, wow. And those are really good. Actually backing up right when he would need to as Locus uh, respawn here. Templar's uh, going north. I'm a little confused about what exactly he's playing. Okay, he's just regrouping. Mm -hmm. That was really, really well done by SOS. But he really handled the, that battle look everywhere. Look at the supply count now. It's 105 to 154. I mean, Zerg is, is recuperating. Mm -hmm. He's now got the army. He didn't have much of the map, really. Uh, I mean, Zerg was... Most of Zerg's... Uh, would be base was a ghost town, really. Um, that you know, SOS was slowly dismantling, but now Zerg has an army. I mean, Zerg has a real serious threat of an army here. He certainly does. He's starting to get that composition that you would actually normally see at 31 minutes. So <laughs> uh, that's kind of tough. But we do have Colossus production coming back up for yep. SOS. He is making a fourth base as well. So also you know, keep in mind, maybe this game normalizes and actually just goes into like late game mode. We might just have like an hour long game. We could, I don't man. think so, but maybe. It could happen, man. The way this is going out, I mean, now I will say SOS has stabilized. Even though he doesn't have the you know the production or supply yet, uh -huh. Solki has got the stable army, but it's just now kind of rebuilding that production. I love this move. Uh, you know, he's just using the Blink Stalkers and their mobility because Solki's base setup is really weird. You know, it's merry-go-round. He's got bases both to the north and the south of that main base in the center. Which means that he can't really cover everything with locusts all that well. Which means the the blink stalkers are actually doing a really good job. Um, backing up now, and he's not even going to want to use storms yet on these mm. um, locusts since he's spending mana to get rid of free units. Thought for a second that Nexus had really low energy and health, and then I realized there was a mothership core on top of it. <laughs> we have. The swarm host kind of moving around the map. Sulky definitely one of the Zerg players that moves his swarm host around more than anyone else. Well, it's really good he rotates where they're at so that yeah. the Protoss can't, um, for instance, use previous scouting information to, to punish his opponent later on. Yeah, he doesn't like to stay in the same patterns where he becomes too predictable. That's definitely a, a trademark of Sulky's play. So uh, I think you were right, Artosis. I think this game basically normalizes. <laughs> Unless Sulky has a that way. really strong killing blow. Uh, do you know uh, when we saw the base at the bottom left, what were the minerals like down there? I think they're still okay because he's just had so few uh, probes overall. You might be right on that. I think like he only has 33 probes right now on two bays that are actually mining. That also goes to emphasize, for instance, for, instance, for the Zerg with 47 drones, how many uh, attacking units he has. Mm. <laughs> Well, the economy is uh, continuing to grow for both sides here. Upgrades actually starting again. That's when you really know that a game is stabilizing, is when people are like, well, I better get this upgrade. This game's yeah. going to go on a bit longer. <clears throat> this is kind of like that uh, Game Boy or, or Nintendo DS game you're playing, or Toast, where you thought it was over, and then we're in a whole new part of the game. Yeah. It's pretty fantastic as well. Mm hmm. Oh, the Blink Stalker is really gaining a lot of value over and over. You know, uh, when you get into a game that gets low economy and gets scrappy, 
Units like Swarm Hosts, like Blink Stalkers, anything with mana, those are the units that you really get a lot of value out of. Something like Zealots, that's something that goes and attacks and it dies. Yeah, and they're supposed to reload it because you're trying to keep your economy superior while putting down theirs. Yes, but in these exactly. really dire situations like this... Um, the Roaches aren't as good. The Stalkers are really good, though. Immortal's not really that good. That's for defending against Roaches and mm. stuff, but not for actually going out and doing more damage. Same with the Archons. Um, so the DT is now going to come up over here. It looks like he might just try to get some drones. Yeah, maybe just kind of checking out what's going on. Now, we do have these Roaches hitting that third base. Some Zealots being warped in to try to help out. And we have another attack going towards the fourth base as SOS moves down to defend his third. SOS hitting with the DT over there in the upper right. Meanwhile, coming in over here now with Locust, taking out the Colossi. Does hold this area, though. Looks like those Locusts not quite close enough to uh, There's a lot of kills on this DT, by the way. Yeah, nine kills now. Should probably go hide that somewhere else, yeah. Keep Zerg, really. Zerg actually has a lot of the map to try to babysit, especially versus DTs. Yeah, he certainly so he does. Should, it, SOS should continue to use a few DTs here and there to just keep his opponent busy. That's the beautiful thing about SOS. He'll continue to multitask and kind of push you all around the map. And especially in a game like this, it becomes more powerful. We have quite a few Broodlords on the way once again. This is something that I don't think he's really going to expect. Because when you kill that Greater Spire and you've already dealt with the first batch of Broodlords... Yeah, you usually think it's eliminated from the game, you know? Yeah, But, I mean, uh, Sulky's already teched all the way back up there, knowing that's what he's going to need here. Especially against an army full of Colossi and Archons like this. Mm. And with only 16 Blink Stalkers, basically what he's going to have to rely on is dealing ridiculous amounts of splash damage between Archons, Psy Storms, and Colossi. So that his Stalkers can finish up everything else. And he does have ridiculous amounts of splash damage, so maybe not the worst plan. Definitely needs more, though, to deal with these broods. This is, like, getting really scary. Looks like uh, he's just... Oh, no, excuse me. I thought those locusts were going to get down there to the uh, bottom right, I guess. Were they not t sent down there? Uh, you no, see the locusts like, pathing? Yeah, I think they're just being sent to zone out. Oh, they're just right-click there, out. and they stop there. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess this hatcher is going to be taken out. That's unfortunate there for the Zerg. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Okay, oh, no. he barely saves that thing. Well, God. the Protoss army's coming. I don't think it's alive for long. Nice job wiping out these Hydras. But this number of Broodlords, especially over the ledge here, above the Protoss army, I mean, this could really hurt him. He, he needs some beef underneath him, though, and he doesn't really have that. Well, here we go. Some size Storms going down. I think he doesn't quite realize how many Broodlords are there yet. Well, he does now. Go down to the bottom hatchery, quick! Nope, never mind. I think that Archon maybe may have been able to kill it, but doesn't want to lose that Archon right now. SOS is still pretty low economy, considering. The next expansions SOS have to take would be on the plateaus. Over here, like the I, one that Zerg already yeah. took, that's not going to be easy to take, because with Broodlords out, they could just park over that area. That's true. That is very true. But I think a plateau is the next base he has to take. There's well, no, really nothing else. Point, point in, in case for that, the Ortosis, is that that's going to be very hard for the Protoss to hold. Yeah. And that's going to be Ooh. something, even if he has to do it, he might not be able to do it but easily. He looks like he's caught those Broodlords kind of alone, but he simply doesn't have enough anti-air oh, to really deal with it. just too many units. Yeah, that's Man, pretty this is scary. Carried through this army. I think right now SOS just has to focus on the one advantage he really has, which is mobility. This is a really slow army from Sulky, so he may be able to run around, kill a base while he builds up. Uh, SOS does take more up that bottom right base there too. Very nice. Um, yeah, you're right, Artosis. I mean, this is a not mobile Zerg army, immobile Zerg army, not immobile, but not particularly mobile. It was immobile, <laughs> be like a hatchery. Um, <laughs> but he needs to actually figure out how to punish this, and he's going for the actual engagement here. And this is a lot of really nice size storms. I gotta say, I'm really impressed. If he could maybe get up there, oh, blink man. under that. Nope, he backs up. Yeah, those are all pretty low. He, I feel like he needs to continue to press forward here while those Broodlords yeah. are at such low health. I mean, I, I you know, there's, there's not even a queen out here to transfuse, so like, all they can do is heal on their own. I think Zerg's mined out the bottom right expansion and almost mined out the middle left expansion, which is something to note. Because even though Protoss just lost that base up there, if he can retake that later on, he should be in good shape. Right now, uh, SOS continuing to push forward. Does uh, have another DT up here, just continuing to harass all over the place. And this is really tough right now because uh, Sulky wants to have his entire army that we're seeing come up here be underneath those Broodlords. If they're not there, the yeah. Broodlords are very vulnerable. That's same, true. Same not just for the Broodlords, but for the Swarm Hosts as well. 
Now, all Sulky needs to do right now is hold on a bit longer. Oh my god, that's an overextension, oh. but possibly. Ooh, and that's a good blink forward right there. Picking off quite a few Broodlords at the moment. Oh, his Stalker's actually glitched for a moment there. Uh, trying to attack something they can no longer see and take a lot of damage. Loses quite a few. Very nice, nice time, time warp. warp. Really nice time warp. Does he have an observer over here? Can he see the swarm host? Uh, he does not have an observer at the moment. Okay, there's no observer out actually on the map, but for some, I guess Sulky doesn't know that. Yeah, you, you don't want to just leave those there. Splash damage can hit him anyways. And you know what? These claws I continue to deal a lot of damage, but he has no economy left and not enough anti-air. I don't, I don't think SOS has any chances left. These blue lords are enough to kill him. God, what a game we've seen here. It's nearly crazy. 45 minutes of StarCraft 2 time. Yeah. Um, you know, he's still microing furiously, trying to get something done, realizing that Sulky, uh, just like him, has almost nothing left as far as economy goes. I think goes. if we get a chan chance to see the other bases, I mean, there's almost no minerals left here for the Zerg at the yeah. hatcheries. I mean, if, if Protoss can get this up and hold up this attack somehow, some way, uh, then I think the game would start to go to Protoss. Right now, the Zerg army is just too formidable. Yeah, uh, he doesn't have an observer still, so hard to actually force What is the story this with this? I mean, he just never seems to have an observer. Yeah, he's well, he's pretty low on everything right now. Uh, but really, he needs to deal with these Broodlords as well. Okay, Doesn't look like he's going to be able to deal with that. I think this is going to be either. an Artosis. Yeah, GG. GG, wow. Really fantastic That was game. a great series. That Indeed. was a real treat. Sulky gets out first in the round of 16, but let me tell you guys, it was no walk in the park no, for him. No, certainly I mean, not. Damn, he was good. Young Hall almost had him. SOS almost had him. A tough group indeed, but Sulky showing why he is uh, one of the very best, if not the best Zerg in the world. SOS playing brilliantly, but at the very end, it just barely wasn't enough. One of the best PVCs we've cast in a while, especially that last one. Yeah, I mean, that was great, um, a great example of endgame PVZ, Indeed. how to play it on a map as weird as that, in that endgame tech. I mean, I loved it. Um, well, Sulky is our first survivor. Now, we're going to go and see who is going to be our first player to be eliminated here from this group in the round of 32. That is going to be going against with Younghua against Shine, and we're going to check that out after this short break, so don't go away.